everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I can't leave any dye behind, no matter how little there is. Here I've got some Tulip One Step Tie Dye that I mixed up this morning, uh, so it's only been in solution for a couple hours tops, and I want to use it to dye some more cotton yarn for just a fun leftover colorway. There's just remnants in these two bottles right here, and I'm going to go fill them up with some water. Today we are going to dye 100 grams of Knit Picks Simply Cotton yarn. This yarn is 100% organic cotton and I'm excited. I am wearing gloves. You want to be aware that uh, tie-dye can stain just about everything. Uh, I did put down a piece of plastic wrap in case uh, I decide I'm going to want to wrap it up, but we are going to have some fun and sort of randomly apply these colors to our yarn. Now I'm not sure how much pigment or any at all there will be from this pastel color that I'm layering on first. Uh, but I figured we may as well try and see what we can get. Um, and yeah, now that I'm doing this, I'm probably not going to need uh, the plastic wrap at all. But I always like to see where the colors take me before I decide how I want to set the color. And we're not going to heat set this, we'll do like a cool set. And now for this is the full strength of this more mauve tone and even at full strength it is fairly pastel but this technique that I'm doing is similar to some of my favorite layering randomly layering color techniques uh, that I do with acid dyes and as I go through I am shifting this around this should be fairly non-repeating, but somewhat random, uh, which I am excited about. Let's see, uh, this purple is almost gone, or it is gone, and in this one there feels like there's barely any pigment left in there. Now so far, this colorway is very, very pastel, and I'm going through this uh, more green color feels like it's more pigmented than the blue. But this is really just giving us a bit of a base because in terms of pigmentation, the navy has a bit of a punch. And so I am going and adding bits of this navy as a contrasting color through our skin. And so that color I expect to have a bit more punch. And I'll say, so things are starting to get fairly saturated. The color penetration is not bad. Um, we're getting color most of the way through the yarn, so I'm pretty happy with that. But the liquid and the total amount of liquid we have in here is increasing. Um, and it's especially increasing as I move the yarn around. And I'm trying to take care not to squeeze it. The colors will absolutely spread. That is sort of a hallmark of tie-dye. And goodness. Ah. Okay, we are gonna, cause see it's getting wet and I'm afraid if it gets too wet and heavy, then, um, then that's the way it's gonna be. Oh, I'm getting torn. Um, cause I really like what's happening, but I'm worried about adding too much more liquid. I honestly don't know if this pastel stuff is going to do anything. That's why I'm glad that we have that more pigmented color in here as well. Um, 
Let me see how dripping it is. Because see, the issue I have is that when I lift it, I can feel that it is wet and then it feels like I could squeeze water out even though it's not yet dripping. And it's that feeling that is making me pause because it's making me concerned that when I go and try to put this inside some kind of plastic bag and I am going to go ahead and sort of roll this up gently. The plastic wrap isn't going to do like a ton of stuff, but my hope is that it might keep some things separate-ish. At least that's my hope. I just don't want this to all become like one solid color. I want to leave some of that tonal stuff in there. So I've just popped it in a Ziploc bag. I'm going to remove this glove to go and seal it. And I'm going to let this sit for 24 to 48 hours at room temperature. And I'll say that even from that little bit of moving it, you can see that the colors have spread. We don't have those sharp, sharp lines. So, I mean, I really shouldn't have expected anything else, but, you know, that's the way it is. As for this, we still have some navy left. We have barely any of this blue and teal. Like, there's really no pigment in there. And there's none of that mauve, that pastel lavender, whatever color that one was. So, gosh, I mean, I think that I, I don't know, I might save these for like a day or so and then decide if I'm going to do something else. It has been closer to a week and the yarn is looking pretty semi-solid <laughs> right now. But we will see what we see. Um, I am plopping it into some, I guess, room temperature type water and we're going to start washing it. One thing is surprising me right away. I did not see like immediate significant bleeding. Uh-oh. I normally wash yarn in a little basin. Oh dear. Uh, and so that way I can show the changing of the water fairly frequently. But for cotton, I was like, it might just be easier to start filling up the stick. But overall, I'm impressed that there's not a ton of bleeding. The color is pastel. Uh, it actually reminds me a tiny bit of indigo. There are some darker patches and some paler patches. I'm starting to see maybe a hint of what might feel like some purple or some of that green come through, but there is no question that this does not look anything like what I had originally set up. I pulled my little basin back out because, well, I'm curious. That did not seem like very much bleeding, but maybe there just wasn't a ton of pigment there at all. I'm increasing the temperature of our rinse water and I just added some dish soap so that way we can see. And the thing I like about the white basin is it really makes it easy to see what is there. Yeah, that isn't bad. For rinse two of tie-dyed yarn, that is pretty incredible. Uh, I, um, I don't think that it has to do with the time that we let this soak for about a week. <laughs> yep, not two days. It's been about a week. I think that the bigger difference was that there wasn't that much dye added on to begin with. Like a lot of the dyes were fairly pastel. And unlike what we see with acid dyes, where all the dyes can exhaust eventually, I think with tie dye, it absolutely makes a bigger difference what the concentration of the dye is when you add it to the yarn um, in terms of the intensity that you see. And we will likely remain <laughs> at this more pastel level of bleeding for a while, maybe because, well, the color on here is more pastel. But I am going to continue to wash this until I can get the water fairly clear. Uh, it'll probably take five to six more washings. Again, this is not bad for 
for tie-dye, but it does take a while. And if you have yarn that you dyed with tie-dye and then you knit something of it, I recommend washing it on its own for the first few washes, just like you would with a brand new tie-dye t-shirt. So anyway, I'll come back once the yarn is dry. It is not often that I admit disappointment in a colorway, and I feel disappointed here. Now, there's nothing wrong with this dusty tonal blue with the tiny, tiniest hint of some pink and green in there. Zooming in, there's some areas where you can feel a little bit of soft purple and a little bit of soft green. But that navy, I liked the contrast that we were getting as I was dyeing it. And as things spread, I mean, maybe I went too far, I moved it too much, added too much liquid, things spread too much. <sighs> maybe I should have heat set it when I had it where I liked it because that does cause the dyes to strike a bit faster. I don't know, but I think that clearly I need to buy more colors of fiber reactive dyes and spend more time playing with them to get the kind of effects on cotton yarn that I love on wool. And again, the yarn is really, really beautiful. It's just not quite what I was hoping from this Leave No Dye Behind. I wanted something, to be honest, that was more than just a blue tonal. <laughs> and that's what I got. Oh man, I knew that that lavender color is more of a pastel, but at the same time, I filmed this video on the same day I mixed those dyes. So I didn't see yet the final colors from that navy, from that lavender, to know how maybe they weren't as intense as they looked when wet. And so that is something that is important to keep in mind and to have some realistic expectations. So if, I wouldn't even call this video an oops. It's just vastly different from how it looked as I was dyeing it. And I'm a bit bummed, but it's a learning experience. And so it's always good to think about the positive and think about those learning experiences, uh, especially when it's not something that I die as often. All of my journey here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel is about exploring different ways to apply color to yarn and sharing those experiences so you can learn alongside with me. And then you can decide what techniques you wanna try, what dyes you wanna try, what techniques that I've tried that you want to take in a slightly different tweaked direction. Uh, so it's a collaboration and we're all learning together and it is just so much fun. So if you're excited about this journey, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so you never miss a new video. And while you're at it, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. You engaging with the videos is the biggest way that you can support the content here on the channel. I also have an Etsy shop where my hand dyed yarn goes and I have a Patreon. You can find more information about all that in the links I have in the video description. There are other handy links down there like to playlists and some of my favorite uh, tools and equipment that I use for dyeing yarn. And so it's worth checking out the description for more information on all of my videos. Thank you so much for watching everyone.